Welcome, everyone. We'd ask that you please take your seats. Thank you very much. Good morning, I'm Christy Brackens, co-director of the VRN, and this is Michael Silman. And we would like to welcome you to the VRN Summit and ask that you all please rise for the singing of the national anthem by Ms. Rhea Walker. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Who said us that start spangled First of all, let me say welcome to ATF. Uh, this is uh, a pivot point for us. You've heard a lot over the last several years about smart on crime. Uh, there's a lot of suits in the audience, a lot of law enforcement professionals, but more importantly, a lot of teammates on this very important effort. Uh, many of us, all of us in the room, have experience at all levels of government with respect to the thing that is near and dear to all of us and that's keeping our communities safe. Keeping our communities safe and making sure that there's an environment for our communities to grow and thrive. Uh, there are folks here from some really tough areas with some tough challenges. And it's our hope that uh, over the next several days that we will be able to collaborate, that we will be able to share some practices, but more importantly to be able to go back to our respective jurisdictions, staying in touch with each other and put our shoulders to the wheel to make the dream a reality. You know, when Director Comey uh, came on board, the Attorney General was kind enough to host a lunch with the four of us. Uh, Mark is here, but you weren't at the lunch, but Stacia and Michelle, uh, who I've had the privilege to work with 
over a number of years, we broke bread with the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General, and Stacia brought some buttons that I think surprised some people. And we all went to lunch with the button that said, Teamwork Makes the Dream Work. Teamwork makes the dream work, which is uh, really an underpinning and a, a, and a motivational uh, point of reference for me. But it's also important to remember that John Maxwell quote, which is the back end, which I remember, and I hope everybody takes away from it. Teamwork makes the dream work, but a leader's vision, the leader's vision turns the dream into a nightmare if he's got a big dream and a bad team. This is the team that's going to start to make a difference to the extent that we aren't already making a difference in our respective communities around the country. To make smart on crime, to make smart policing, to make community safety in a real and sustained manner a part of the environments that we all have a special responsibility for. So thank you for being here and it's my pleasure to introduce another good friend and teammate, Carol Mason the Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Justice Programs. Good afternoon, and thanks, Todd, and thank you so much for hosting us here today. Now, if you're all looking a little bit somber, this is really a celebration. Um, and for those of you who don't know, this, it really is a dream come true. We've been working on this for over a year. So I hope by the time you all leave, we'll all be smiling and ready to get to work. So I'm very pleased to join you and the Attorney General as well as my distinguished Justice Department colleagues and so many local leaders and today, at today's launch of the Violence Reduction Network. I'd like to extend a special welcome to members of Congress and their staff who are here, particularly Senator Coons, who I saw him earlier today, there he goes. And uh, he's been waiting for this day a long time, so thank you for being patient with us. We're delighted to have you here today, and I'm also going to recognize our colleagues from the Office of Management and Budget who are here. And as you know, we couldn't be here without them, so thank you all as well, Jim and Julie and the two folks. And a warm welcome to all of our guests from out of town, the mayors, deputy mayors, police chiefs, prosecutors, and officials from the ATF, FBI, DEA, and Marshall field offices, and of course our U.S. Attorney, I see Melinda there, um, we're very, and I saw Zane earlier, I'm not, if I missed anybody, I'm sorry, I just didn't see you. But we're all so pleased that you're here, and we're glad that you've accepted our invitation to join the Violence Reduction Network and grateful for your commitment to the safety of your citizens and communities. We're excited that you've agreed to be part of this collaboration with the Department of Justice, and we appreciate all that you've done to make room for us at your table. And I'm going to digress. They always get a little worried when I leave the script. But do you look at this stage and see the folks who are sitting here working together? I know we ask you all the time, particularly in the grant world, we say collaborate, collaborate, collaborate. Well, the Justice Department is collaborating. And we're not, if this is not the show, this is real partnership, real, real collaboration. And you all gave us an opportunity to really take our work together to a deeper level. But the nice thing is the work in the partnership here doesn't stop with the Violence Reduction Network. We're going to continue to help other communities because when now we know each other's work, we know where, where, who people are and who to call and pick up the phone and say, hey, I've got this problem. So thank you all for trusting us with this initiative and coming to the table in a different way. So it's an opportunity to pool our resources and to find out what we can achieve when we concentrate our efforts and expertise on your most pressing public safety challenges. Our goals today and over the next three days are to bring together all of the law enforcement stakeholders from each of the five network sites. So I'd like to do a little call on the spot. So Camden, please raise your hands. Camden, New Jersey. We've got Chicago. Where are the Chicago folks? There you go. We've got Detroit, Michigan. Okay. <laughs> and I don't even have to see to know that was Barbara McQuaid. Uh, couldn't find you because she's little, but I know that voice. Um, Oakland, Richmond County, California, there they go. Um, and Wilmington, Delaware, that's right, oh good. Um, so we're here to help you identify your toughest violence related challenges, determine what resources are available to meet those challenges, and figure out how we can close the gaps by tapping our knowledge of what works. We want to pay particular attention to how we use evidence-based approaches to improve our responses. Through his Smart on Crime initiative, the Attorney General has led the department 
to a greater reliance on science and data in preventing and reducing crime. The aim of the Violence Reduction Network is to make that evidence-based approach to the bedrock principle of all of our crime-fighting strategies. While you are here, we hope that you find out what steps we need to take to leverage our resources to reduce violence in your cities. And when I talk about this time our resources, I'm primarily talking at this moment, because the others will talk about their resources, about the Office of Justice Program. OJP exists to support local law enforcement and criminal justice agencies, and we have a wealth of training, technical assistance, information, and other resources to help you, much of it available through the Bureau of Justice Assistance, which is represented by Denise, who I'll talk, to, talk about in a second. We want to know not just about the gaps you're seeing locally, but what's missing from us at the federal level. Does our training and technical assistance address your community's needs? Do our grant programs complement your violence reduction strategies? What do you need from the Department of Justice that will help you do your job more effectively? We hope that you'll give our representatives feedback as you meet with them over the next three days and throughout this initiative. A little later, BJA's Deputy Director, Kristen Mahoney, who's there in the red, will tell you more about the objectives of the Violence Reduction Network and what we hope to achieve during the summit and throughout the course of the initiative. One thing I do want to say is that we encourage you really to give us your feedback. It is important for us to know what it is you need and so that we can be a better ally with you and partner with you. The Department of Justice has a significant enforcement presence in each of your cities, which means that we are invested in your crime fighting efforts. And we're very pleased that this work is paying off. Some of you are seeing reductions in the violent crime rate and you're building on that momentum. We hope that the network will serve as the forum for a robust exchange of ideas, information and resources that will help you move your activities and your successes to the next level. It's worth saying that this summit is not something that's just going to end today. Today is the kickoff, the start, the official launch of what we expect to be a two-year partnership. So this is the beginning of your two-year commitment to help us deliver uh, your, on your plans to reduce violence in your communities. And we're going to be assessing what happens here because you all are, um, for lack of a better word, are guinea pigs because you were intentionally chosen because of the unique features of each of your communities. And because of the uniqueness of your communities, you're going to help us figure out how we can do a better job in delivering our resources across the country. So the Office of Justice Programs and our partners across the department will be working with you through the Strategic Site Liaison. So I'm not to leave anyone out. Strategic, strategic Site Liaisons, would you please stand up so people know who you are? There you go. Thank you. Thank you for the work. That, they have daytime jobs too, but they are, um, they are really critical to the success of this initiative. And we hope that you in turn will engage with them and with us to help you. Um, before I introduce the Attorney General, I want to acknowledge two people who are really responsible for what's happening here today and will be with you for the next two years. So it's Christy Brackens of the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Christy, stand up because they need to know who you are. And Michael Seelman, who's on loan to BJA from the FBI. Um, they are responsible for this program happening today. And again, they will be your partners throughout this work. So I also want to thank Christy Mahoney. And she thinks she knows what I'm going to say about her but she doesn't. They, um, so what I want you to know is, is a year ago when I started, I had one-on-ones and Chris told me about this idea. She knows what it's like to be in your shoes because she worked in Baltimore and for the state of Maryland um, and, and said, there's a better way for the feds to deliver technical assistance and help with these issues. And this is her baby, this is her design. So you'll hear more about her. So we have Kristen to thank for this program as well. And finally, the woman we really have to thank is Denise O'Donnell, who is the director of BJA. So Denise came to OJP after having served as a U.S. attorney and the deputy secretary for public safety in New York, and she's used every bit of that knowledge and experience to bring to, to BJA and to the Office of Justice Program so that we can be better partners with those of you in the law enforcement field. So thank you, Denise. And of course, the person you're really here to hear is the attorney general. And he is the man who's most responsible for strengthening our ties with the community. And as a former U.S. attorney and a superior court judge, he is very much attuned to the public safety needs of our communities, and he has worked hard, tirelessly, 
throughout his career to make sure these communities, those communities have the support they need to solve local crime problems. As Attorney General, he has been one of the biggest advocates of an evidence-based approach to crime and violence, and under his leadership and direction, the department has get engaged in unprecedented work to expand the knowledge of what works and to make that information available to those of you who need it most. He's also had a strong personal commitment to state and local law enforcement and has fought hard to give them the tools, resources, and federal funding you need to do your jobs effectively and safely. It's my honor and privilege to work with this Attorney General, and so please join me in welcoming Eric Holder, the Attorney General. He's coming from that door. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, please have a seat. Uh, thank you, Carol. Um, before I begin my, my formal remarks, I, uh, I know we're all mindful of the dedicated public servant who is, uh, who is missing from this crowd today. So I'd like to take a moment to extend my heartfelt condolences to our, our colleagues from Delaware on the um, sudden and untimely loss of Sarita Wright, uh, a deputy attorney general in the Delaware attorney general's office. Uh, she was a, a passionate prosecutor who believed really strongly in the work that we've gathered to advance. Her tragic and untimely passing is a, is a shock to, uh, to us all. And as we take up the work before us, I think we should do so in her honor, bearing each of her family members, her friends, and her loved ones in our thoughts, as well as in our prayers. Um, thank you, Carol, for those kind words. And thank you for the outstanding leadership that you have shown uh, as the Assistant Attorney General for the Office of Justice Programs. I also want to recognize uh, Denise O'Donnell, our uh, wonderful director, and her colleagues from the Bureau of Justice Assistance who, uh, who regularly work with the dedicated men and women of OJP to help move the, the criminal justice field toward a, a fuller embrace of science and data. I also want to thank Director B. Todd Jones. How many people here know what the B stands for? Yeah. Okay. That's five bucks. Another five bucks you owe me because I didn't say it. <laughs> B. Ty Jones uh, and his ATF colleagues for hosting today's important summit, along with uh, Director Stacia Hilton of the United States Marshal Service, DEA Administrator Michelle Lenhart, Deputy Director Mark Giuliano of the FBI. Now, where, Mark, where are you? Now, you understand that this is a secure facility, right, Mark? and that everybody you see here has got a name tag, some lanyard and all that stuff, so that we make sure that only the appropriate people get in, right? Look what I have. Mark Giuliano, right? <laughs> I found this in the hold room where I was before I came in, so. Is that the real Mark Giuliano? <laughs> um, Mark's a great guy who I um, start my mornings with uh, as we go through the threat stream for the past 24 hours. So um, he's, he's uh, whenever I'm in a good mood, he kills it for me. You know? <laughs> uh, also, would like to recognize the principal deputy director of the Office uh, on Violence Against Women, B. Hansen, where, see, over there. Uh, for your critical efforts to strengthen law enforcement partnerships and to bolster uh, public safety across the country. I'd like to acknowledge each of the members of Congress and leaders from uh, the Obama administration who have taken the time to be here today. Uh, your presence, your contributions, and your, your commitment understand, underscore the power uh, and the importance of the work that we're beginning this week. I have been fortunate to work closely with uh, many of you over the course of my tenure as Attorney General, and I'd always be grateful for your leadership your friendship and your support. And last but certainly not least, I, I want to recognize all of the United States attorneys who are here today. Uh, all the U.S. attorneys kind of stand up. Where are you? Where are we go? One. There right, we go. There we go. All right. <coughs> Crime's running rampant with all these U.S. attorneys here. Uh, it's good to have you all here. Uh, local elected leaders, police chiefs, sheriffs, state, state and county prosecutors, uh, and other critical partners who have come together to build uh, this new partnership. 
Each of you stands on the front lines of our national fight against gun, gang, and drug-fueled violence. Every day, your efforts help to improve and even to save countless lives, and your tireless work lies at the heart of the really innovative new initiative that we're kicking off this week and which will enable us to take our collective efforts to a new and a higher level. Now, as you know, my time at the Justice Department will soon be drawing to a close, but my commitment to this work will never waver. And in the months ahead, I will not slow down or let up because a great deal remains to be done. Today, we mark the official launch of the Violence Reduction Network, a historic, collaborative, and highly data-driven effort to prevent and to reduce violence in five great communities across our country, from Chicago, Illinois, to Detroit, Michigan, from Wilmington, Delaware, to Camden, New Jersey, and in Oakland and Richmond, California. This really sweeping initiative will bring together law enforcement and public safety leaders. It will enhance the Justice Department's ability to provide strategic intensive training and technical assistance. It will provide local officials and law enforcement executives in each of our partner communities with the support they need to advance local anti-violence strategies. And it will enable them to secure unprecedented access to a really a broad spectrum of Justice Department resources, empowering us to strengthen partnerships and tackle persistent challenges together. This new um, all-hands approach to curbing endemic violence is founded on the recognition that our efforts are most effective when all criminal justice leaders stand united. And it's predicated on the notion that although violent crime is in some ways a fundamentally local problem, it is not one that any one community can meet in, isol in isolation. So as we've seen, few of the challenges that you face are unique to your individual cities. On the contrary, they both exemplify and in some cases amplify the challenges that other jurisdictions are facing as well. And if we hope to counter these evolving threats and to address the, the underlying conditions that most often breed them, it's become increasingly clear that we will need to collaborate more closely, work together more cooperatively than we have ever done before. In, in recent years, uh, as you know, we've witnessed uh, a steady and a really impressive decline in, in crime rates at the national level. The national rate of violent crime reported to the FBI in 2012 was about half the rate reported in 1993. Think about that, half the rate reported in 1993. And in the roughly five and a half years since President Obama took office, we've seen decreases of roughly 10% in both crime and incarceration rates. And that's the first time that we've seen these two critical markers go down at the same time in more than 40 years. Now, these promising trends reflect historic gains in public safety, and they have been made possible in large part by the visionary leadership of police chiefs, sheriffs, and federal law enforcement leaders like, like so many of you. The bravery of frontline law enforcement officers and the, and the active engagement in the moral direction of community and faith-based leaders. Uh, this progress has been significant, and it is worth celebrating. But we must not fail to account for the crucial fact and the unfortunate reality that not all of America's communities have been able to share fully in these gains. In some cities, and particularly in small sections of those cities, crime rates have remained stubbornly and unacceptably high, despite the valiant efforts and, and the strong leadership of public safety officials at really at, at every level, there are still far too many places where social ills like poverty, unemployment, and widespread lock, lack of opportunity continue to trap people uh, in, in lives of crime and in lives of incarceration, conditions that, that give rise to tense and often tragic circumstances in which systemic violence can easily take root. And this is why just over a year ago, I launched a new Smart on Crime initiative to help address these very conditions, to, to strengthen the federal criminal justice system across the board, to increase our focus on proven strategies for disrupting violence and getting people back on constructive paths, and to bring criminal justice leaders together to find a way to end, once and for all, the destructive cycles that devastate lives and tear communities apart. Now, Already, this initiative has shifted our approach to certain challenges, including low-level, nonviolent federal drug crimes, by moving the federal system away from outdated sentencing models while improving public safety and, 
and holding dangerous criminals rigorously to account. Going forward, this approach, I believe, shows tremendous promise for bringing about significant and potentially transformative positive change. And that's why today with this Violence Reduction Network, we are taking additional action to complement the Smart on Crime initiative and to amplify the work that's already well underway. Uh, about a year ago, the President convened a meeting at the White House with 18 mayors to discuss strategies for reducing youth violence. And following that meeting, I sat down with mayors and police chiefs to talk about how, how the federal government can better support local efforts. The Violence Reduction Network will, you know, will address many of the concerns that I heard, including the need for increased coordination and ready access to Justice Department resources. I know all of you are here this week because you, you share my grave concern about isolated areas in cities and towns throughout America where violence remains, even now, all too prevalent, where pockets of disillusionment, displacement, and, and danger interrupt the progress and the prosperity that we've seen at the national level, and where day in and day out, local leaders and police officials work tirelessly, but often against long odds to build safer communities for local residents and to turn back the tide of violence. I understand well just how difficult and how seemingly intractable, intractable these and, and related challenges can be because, like you, I faced many of them myself. Uh, during my time, uh, my tenure as the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia in the 1990s, Washington, Washington, D.C., was a city in crisis. Some even called it the murder capital of the United States. And although we've come a long way in the years since then by establishing strong community policing initiatives, by forging close partnerships between law enforcement and local leaders, and by expanding economic opportunities for, for D.C. Re residents, every step forward has been hard won. Progress has not been uniform. And like so many others, this city continues to face persistent crime problems that are common to many urban centers across America. So, uh, so addressing these problems, reducing the incidence of crimes like domestic violence, sexual assault, and drug trafficking, reversing an overall decline in the quality of life, and repairing sometimes strained relationships between law enforcement and, and local residents, each of these tasks is a tall order to say the least. All of them require the unqualified commitment of civic leaders and the devotion and energy of community activists, the same kind of commitment, devotion, and energy that all of you are already showing. But they also demand a unifying collective vision, one that's both conceived and carried out at the local level with strong and steadfast support from federal officials. And this is one of the reasons why on, on Saturday, as part of the administration's My Brother's Keeper initiative, President Obama announced a new My Brother's Keeper Community Challenge, which will encourage cities, counties, and, and tribal nations to implement coherent cradle to college and career strategies for improving life outcomes of all young people, including boys and young men of color. Now, this effort is really broad in scope, but it's not only relevant to the anti-violence work that we begin today, it's based on the very same recognition that underlies the violence reduction network, that there will never be an effective substitute for the experience, the leadership, and the guidance that local officials and community partners are uniquely positioned to bring to crime challenges. Now, Washington simply does not have and cannot offer a one-size-fits-all solution to the problems that communities face. But the federal government can, and the federal government, in fact, must play an important role in making local solutions more easily attainable by providing the very latest tools that you need to get the job done, by offering cutting-edge training and, and technical assistance to those who are, who are serving on the front lines, by making available all the information-sharing capabilities and the rigorous research and sound data that local officials can apply to local challenges, and by leveraging relationships with experts and other community leaders throughout the nation, thus building a strong and cohesive network of of public servants whose knowledge and experience can inform and augment our efforts on the ground. You know, after all, at, at the bottom line is, is that the Justice Department's primary responsibility and the cause that unites everyone uh, in this crowd today are one and the same. 
All of us stand together in our commitment to protect the American people from violent crime in all its forms. And this week, the launch of our Violence Reduction Network, we are translating this firm commitment into a sustained strategic effort. Now, for our part, the Department of Justice is devoting its wealth of resources to help advance this collaborative work in each of the five network communities. Our U.S. attorneys will serve as your partners on the ground, providing both a federal field presence and ready access to the assistance and the support that you need. Meanwhile, my colleagues on the department's senior leadership team, some of whom you'll be hearing from this week, will serve as your advocates here in Washington, helping to keep doors open and lines of communication cleared, listening to your concerns and responding to your individual needs. You should know that at every turn, we stand ready and willing to help streamline, to facilitate, and to cut through red tape. And we are pleased to offer you the services of a core of highly experienced and nationally recognized criminal justice professionals to serve as strategic site liaisons in each of our five communities. Now, these dedicated individuals will help ensure that every site receives appropriate training and closely tailored technical assistance that is both strategically focused and complementary of the uh, violence reduction efforts that are already underway. Of course, this robust support and these significant federal assets are not being offered in isolation. They must be matched by the diligent work of valued partners and other key stakeholders in every location that's been selected to participate in the violence reduction network. Fortunately, thanks to the leaders in this room and your colleagues back home, this is something that has never really been in question. And we're already seeing just such a commitment in all five of our network sites where outstanding dedicated and truly impressive violence reduction teams are hard at work as we speak. In fact, I can announce today that the Justice Department will also take additional action to support a large number of local law enforcement agencies across the country, including some of the cities that are represented here today. Under the leadership of Director Ron Davis, our COPS office will be providing nearly $124 million in new grants to support the hiring and the retention of 944 officers at 215 agencies and municipalities throughout America. This total includes funding for officers in Chicago, Camden, and Oakland. These targeted investments will help to address acute needs such as high rates of violent crime, funding 75% of the salary and benefits of every newly hired or rehired officer for three full years. And the impact of this critical support will extend really far beyond the creation and the preservation of law enforcement jobs. It will strengthen relationships between these officers and the communities that they serve, improve public safety, and keep law enforcement officers on the beat. As all of these comprehensive, cooperative efforts unfold, I'm confident that by working together, we will be able to reach our individual and collective public safety goals. We will continue to see crime and violence recede in our communities, and we will bring about the gains that our citizens need and that our citizens deserve. But this progress may not be swift or smooth. It may unfold in fits and in starts, and I'm certain that we will encounter both successes and significant challenges along the way. But we must always remember that none of us is alone in this work. We have built-in checkpoints and other ways to assess our progress and to identify changing needs so that we can ensure that every site is getting the support that it requires. And so long as we remain focused on our goals, so long as we resolve not to lose heart or to lose sight of our objectives, even when the going gets tough, I believe we can all be confident in where this effort will take us from here. So I look forward to working with each of you to meet the challenges and to overcome the obstacles that undoubtedly lie ahead, no matter where our individual paths may take us or in what new capacities we may contribute. I will always be proud to count you all as colleagues and as partners, and I'm eager to see where all of you will help lead us in the months and the years to come. Thank you very much.
Thank you to the Attorney General for those words and for his leadership and commitment to our communities. I'm Kristen Mahoney. I'm uh, the Deputy Director at the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and good afternoon, and thank you for joining us here. We are finally here at the launch of the Violence Reduction Network. I'm supposed to pause, but it's really a sigh, like, phew. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a year in the making. Um, I joined BJA in 2012, but like all of you, I spent most of my career in the field. I was serving as the Director of Grants and Government Relations in 2000 when the Department of Justice awarded the Baltimore Police Department, my department, a COPS grant for 200 officers for $24 million, which at that time really jump-started our efforts towards a safer Baltimore. Of course, those days are far behind us. Today's budget realities cannot support these large infusions of federal grant funds. And although our budgets have decreased, our understanding of what has worked and what doesn't work has improved. We've learned the importance of using evidence-based data-driven strategies. We now know it's essential that the federal government partner with states to leverage funding with their existing assets and share information to better align our efforts with your priorities at the local level. When we do this, we do more with less. I wish I could stand here and say that the alignment and partnership is happening in every community across the country in perfect synchronicity, but it's not. In my tenure as Deputy Director for Director O'Donnell, I've ob observed individual siloed reactions to incidents and requests throughout the country. The establishment of this violence reduction network give us, gives us all a chance to step back and inventory what we have. It's an opportunity to sort out where and how we should be working together better as one DOJ to support cities and communities across the country in your violence prevention efforts. The Violence Reduction Network is not about asking for more agents or inviting local police to participate in more federal task forces. It's not a grant program. There's no direct funding provided to the participating sites. It's about how DOJ programmatic and law enforcement components can partner with five sites to look at what we've done in these cities and what we could be doing and have failed to date. It's time for some self-reflection so we can better support cities and communities to reduce violent crime. By working together with these select cities, we will leverage our collective resources to reduce violent crime. So VRN is a holistic approach to violence reduction. The network creates a forum for cities to engage in violence reduction strategies directly with the Department of Justice programmatic research and law enforcement components. The network is designed to leverage lessons learned and government assets in an all-hands approach. The violence reduction network aims to look at beyond what the data is happening. It tells us is happening in cities and communicate communities, but understand why in spite of declining crime rates, many of our communities still suffer from alarming rates of homicide, shootings, and aggravated assaults. So when you look at the cities participating today, there's often a tendency to just focus on their per capita crime rates, and I think that would be a mistake. I challenge you to look beyond the numbers as we did, because we selected these cities because they have demonstrated, they have demonstrated they have the capacity and willingness to partner with DOJ to implement evidence-based and data-driven strategies that will re result in sustained violence reduction. They didn't come to us, we went to them. We wanna learn from their successes and their challenges. The lessons learned will be replicated in other cities and communities across the country. So whether it's two years, five years, or 10 years from now, we'll be able to tell you what works to sustain a reduction in violent crime based on our experience over the next two years in Camden, Chicago, Detroit, Oakland, Richmond, and Wilmington. The network creates an opportunity for us to work with communities to better understand these root causes of violence and strengthen federal, state, and local law enforcement partnerships. We want to enhance existing violent crime strategies with evidence-based practices and we want to share ideas across a community of practice by teaching each other from research and experience. And we want to strategically deliver training and technical assistance. So as you heard earlier, a key component of the Violence Reduction Network are the strategic site liaisons. We call them the special sauce. 
The strategic site liaisons together represent over 160 years of experience working on these issues. They, the expertise they bring can't be learned in the classroom. It was learned in the trenches. You got Ed Davis, who serves as the SSL for the city of Chicago, has th over 35 years of law enforcement, including service as the police commissioner of the city of Boston and the superintendent in Lowell, Mass. Mr. Terry Gaynor, who's the SSL for Camden, has extensive law enforcement experience, including serving as the 38th U.S. Sergeant at Arms, the former chief of the U.S. Capitol Police, and executive assistant chief of police for Washington, D.C. Metropolitan Police Department, deputy inspector general, and deputy director of the Illinois State Police. He's got 100 years just by himself. <laughs> Mr. Michael Davis, who serves as the, uh, he's chief, Chief Mike Davis, who serves as the SSL for the city of Detroit, has 22 years of law enforcement experience. He's currently the director of public safety for Northeastern University in Boston, Massachusetts, formerly commander of the Internal Affairs Unit, sector commander with Minneapolis, Minnesota Police Department, and the chief of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. And Louis Quijas, who is the SSL for the cities of Oakland and Richmond, has a 36-year career in federal and local law enforcement, including posts as Assistant Secretary for the Office of State and Local Law Enforcement, U.S. Department of Homeland Security, Assistant Director for the Office of Law Enforcement Coordination, Federal Bureau of Investigation, the Chief of High Point, North Carolina. And finally, John Skinner, who will be working with Wilmington, has 20 years years of law enforcement experience, including the Deputy Police Commissioner for the Baltimore Police Department. As you can see, we brought the best of the best to help us launch the VRN this year. The Violence Reduction Network represents the Office of Justice Program's response to the Attorney General's call to action. We want to work side by side with the agencies represented here on the stage to ensure that our efforts are coordinated, and we'll work hard to give our local partners the support they need to reduce the violence in their communities. So thank you all for being here, and um, this is going to now conclude the opening ceremony and public portion of the agenda. So we're going to take a brief pause as we transition to the DOJ Law Enforcement Leadership Panel. So at this point, I need to ask all the congressional officials and their staff to exit the auditorium and members of the media and agency representatives serving on the Federal Media Availability Panel, Ron, Sandra, James, Joe, Beth, and Angel. Time to move to the TV studio room for the federal me media availability. So just give us a couple of minutes, we'll regroup, and we'll be back with you. Thank you. So just a reminder, this will be a brief pause. We'd ask everyone else to stay in your seats, because we'll start in just a couple of minutes. Thank you.